Hey, what's up friends? Hope you're having a great day. I have a really fun tutorial today, and this is again in collaboration with my friend Alessandro Banchio over at Render King. And he came up with some great techniques for looping, and I'm gonna present them to you today. So just a quick reminder, this is part two of our looping series. Make sure to watch part one before you watch this one because we do a lot of kind of the principles of looping, how to set up your timeline and your frame rate and all that stuff. So today I'm gonna show you a couple other great tips, especially when working with a camera move. So we've already set up our scene to be 25 frames per second. I'm just gonna make this 100 frames so everything is divisible by 25. And first thing we're gonna do is add some rotation to this object. And the way we're gonna do that is with Expresso. So let's right click on our tube. Let's go to Cinema 4D Tags and we're gonna click on Expresso. It's gonna pop open an Expresso window and we're gonna drag our tube into this window. Now we wanna control the rotation. So in our little search, we'll just type in rotation. Actually, it's rotate, and under animation and time, we have rotate, we'll drag that out. So now to hook up the rotation to this tube, we need to click on this little dot, drag it over to the blue and let go, and we're going to drive the coordinates, global rotation, and we're gonna do it on the global rotation B, click that, and now if we hit play, you can see that we are rotating this tube. And the great thing is that because we've set up our frames per second and the timeline to be divisible by 25, it's gonna loop perfectly. If we wanna speed this up under our rotate parameters, we can go ahead and change these. Right now it's at 0.5. We could change that to double speed if we wanna do one and it's still going to loop perfectly. Uh, there's a little hiccup at the end. That's because if you remember from the first tutorial, we need to drop that last frame. So this would be 99 frames and then it will loop perfectly because the first and the last frame, if there's 100, are the same. But anyway, all right, so let's actually put this back to 0.5. It's a little bit fast. Now, another thing that we can do to make this a little more interesting is take this sphere and actually have it rotate the other way so it looks a little bit more interesting. So we're going to find our sphere by selecting it and then hitting S with our cursor over the object panel. Here's our sphere. Let's drag that into our Espresso window as well. Let's uh, grab another rotate and let's drag and drop onto the blue. Go to coordinates, rotation, rotation B. And on this one, let's actually do a reverse rotation. So we'll do minus 0.5, minus 0.5, and then it will be going in the opposite direction. So that gives a much more realistic looking spin and a little bit more interest. All right, so now that we have our rotation, let's add a camera. Let's add a camera and let's go ahead and name this camera one and we'll name this tube one. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take these two and we're gonna duplicate them. So drag them down and hold control to make a exact duplicate. And let's name these two. So this is going to be where we want our animation to loop at. And what we're gonna do is highlight both of these. And if we go into our front view and hit S, it'll frame them up. Let's zoom out a little bit. What we're gonna do is take these second ones and we're gonna move them down a little bit. All right, so this will be the end point and the exact spot where we want this to loop. So now what we want is for this object to move down to exactly in this position and then loop. So this number one, we're going to have it slide over and then be in this exact same position. Now it's kind of hard to get it in the exact same position and it does need to be perfect if we're looping. So what I'm gonna show you is the transfer tool. So we're gonna hit shift C to bring up our little search command and we're gonna type in transfer. And if we hit enter, we have our transfer options right here. So right now it's transferring the number one tube and then we have to specify where it's gonna to transfer to. So we're gonna drag the second tube into that transfer slot. And right now it's going to transfer the X, Y, Z position, scale and rotation. And we're gonna hit apply and you'll watch it kind of pop over to here. So apply and it pops over here. So that's exactly in the right position for looping. Now we forgot to put a keyframe in, so we're gonna undo that. And right in the beginning of our animation on that tube, let's make a keyframe. And then we're gonna animate all the way to the end of the timeline, and then we're gonna transfer it over. So we'll click back on our transfer tool and we'll hit apply, and then we'll hit a keyframe. So now what's happening is that first tube is rolling and then landing perfectly in the spot of that second tube. All right, so now at this point, we can just delete that second tube. All right, so now we have our perfect endpoint loop. And now we have to figure out how to get the camera from the one spot to the other. Because if we look in our view here, it's rolling right out of frame, but we want it to actually have the camera follow along with it and have the camera loop as well. And we're gonna do that by using a camera morph. 
So let's highlight one and two. Let's go to our camera drop down and let's click on the camera morph. Now, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure we click on this little icon right here so that we're looking through the morph camera. And if we look at our properties, we have two different cameras. And because they were highlighted, they actually went into those slots already. But if they weren't highlighted, you can just drag and drop your camera one and two into these slots like that. And now what happens is we have a blend. So if we go to our side view, you can see if we move our blend, it's moving between those two cameras perfectly. So all the way to zero, it's the first camera. If you go to 100%, it's the second camera. And just like before, all we have to do is make a keyframe at the beginning go to the end, move our camera all the way to the second camera position and make another keyframe. And now our camera is gonna blend between the two. Now, just like I mentioned in the first tutorial, these are gonna look a little weird because they all have easy ease keyframes and we don't want that. So let's right click, go to animation, show track, and let's click this little icon right here which changes the keyframes to linear. And we need to also do that on our tube. So go to show tracks, and make these linear keyframes. All right, so now everything's set up, we can hit play and see what happens. So you can see that our tube is rotating perfectly, and once it hits that last frame, it's gonna look like it loops perfectly. The camera's going to be in the exact same spot on that last frame, and the rotation and position is gonna be at the exact same spot. So everything is set up perfectly here. And just remember to drop that last frame, and then you're gonna have a perfect loop which is fantastic. And just remember that in between these first and last frames, you can do any animation you want. So in the middle, if you want your object to move up or down, you can actually just animate that. And what's gonna happen is, as long as your first and your last frames are the same, it's going to loop perfectly. So here is our final animation. And like I said, in between the first and the last frames, you can do whatever you want. So we have this spline that's rolling down and we have the, the uh, rotating tube kind of flying up and down. As long as the first and last frame are the same, it doesn't matter. And here's how we did that spline. So you can see that the beginning of the spline and the end of the spline are flat. And then just the middle part has kind of some undulation and curves. And as long as the duplicate one is flat at that exact same point in the camera view, it's gonna loop perfectly. So there you go, a couple tips using the transfer tool and the camera morph tool to make perfect looping animations in Cinema 4D. As always, thank you to Alessandro Bancho for all his help. He did an awesome job on this tutorial and I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. I hope you learned something new and we'll talk to you next time. Ciao.